shut up compressor. So I keep telling myself I want to go ahead and bring players two and three onto the bench, and then for some reason I keep coming back to the jug. Part of it, I think, is because the compressor has been down, and so I haven't been able to paint, and that you know hasn't got me to any sort of like stopping point of okay, prime the engine, prime the cockpit, you know, do something else for a little bit. So I've just kept plugging away, kind of going through different things that I know have to happen on this kit because I've built it before, and so carefully test fitting all over the place, particularly you know up in here where the gun shield or where the uh, you know where the gun mounts go. That sort of facing piece on the leading edge, that's a nasty fit. It's going to be fun to clean up. Uh, the gun doors, you know, having to glue those in very carefully. I actually went and repeated what I did on the F4 and drilled holes inside the gun base so I could kind of get up in there and fix that door as it's set. There's still going to need to be clean up around here, and it may be tough to see on the camera. I'm hesitant to lift this up because the clear parts of the shit will all fall off. But the rivets on these gun doors are significantly larger than the rest of the wing, so I need to get in there with some Mr. Surfacer 500 and kind of tamp those down a little bit. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, basically, I've been kind of just tooling around on this and getting different parts squared away. Once again, confirming that the fit of the wing root right up here at the front is going to be a dicey one that will be lots of fun to clean up. And that sort of thing. But the good news is the compressor is now operational again. Yay! So I can start getting some paint on things, but before I do that, um, you know, I have my various blast tubes that I need to sort out. I have the photo etch in the cockpit, the photo etch sills here, and since these are going to be somewhat abused in the process, I don't want to deal with, you know, painting them and all of a sudden, hey, I chipped right back to the, uh, to the photo etch and I have to cover it up. So. I'm going to load up some uh, Guns Mr. Metal Primer first, take care of those with this, and then I can start actually priming them with, you know, primers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I finally reached the point where I've started throwing primer on things. Engines, cockpit sidewalls, stuff like that. And I'm moving into the part where moving beyond primer to actually adding paint, starting with the cockpit and a few framing pieces in the engine. One of the challenges though is this is a Pacific Theater P47 and obviously saw some shit and got beat up along the way. So for example, the cockpit floor, while it was primed in black, now has some Mr. Paint Duraluminum on it and that has some hairspray on top. And one of the challenges when you're dealing with chipping and black basing at the same time is to cover both of these to the point where you can't tell the, the you know, shading difference between the black and the silver, you have to put down a lot more paint, mainly to cover up that silver because it's gonna make all the paint look lighter as it goes on top until you build that opacity. Which is annoying because it basically uh, degrades a lot of the purposes of using black primer in the first place. So my plan, and I've actually used this on a few things in the past, is to use a very easy chipping paint to add some black back on top of that. And for that, we'll be using some Mission Models paint. This is their 47 black, and then a little bit of their thinner. I'm not using any of their polyurethane stuff because it does actually make the paint harder to chip, and the goal is to have a base that will come off rather easily. Then on top of that, I will be putting down some Mr. Paint Dark Dull Green. Now this is not maybe exactly what I would like out of a Dark Dull Green. It looks a little bit light, um, maybe a little bit, I don't know. It seems just slightly off, but then again, Dark Dull Green is one of those colors that is endlessly debated, and if you pull up reference pictures online, it shifts a whole lot. So. It's one of those where you can kind of pick your poison. Plus, there's also the contention out there that you can find that Razorbacks were actually not painted in Dark Dull Green, and that didn't come along until at least one of the bubble top production blocks. So, you know, whatever. Um, I'm happy with this. It's a nice different thing from the typical interior green, and it will set off the cockpit nicely, and that is that. 
So with that, let's go ahead and spray some of this mission model stuff. Now, something that I talk about in Black Basin 201 in that whole series that applies here is this isn't so much a matter of turning it all a deep black again. It's reducing that level of contrast. So if you think of black as you know zero and pure duraluminum as 100, taking it you know taking that from something more of like a 100 back down to say a 40. So that way when you're painting this, you're not dealing with these massive shifts and just like big splotches of brightness and it's a bit more diffuse. That's essentially the goal here. So rather than using the MRP dark dull green, I've decided to go with Gun's C302 green, which is uh, FS34092, medium green essentially, which is often mentioned as basically an analog for dark dull green. And I've gone ahead and as you can see, let's see here, let's find a piece. Gone ahead and hit the sidewalls, etc. And I am about to go ahead and hit the main cockpit floor. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and get the sills done. Now these, I have not used hairspray on. I have used um, sponged on whisker biscuit so that I can mask them later and not suffer all the paint pulling off. I'm trying to keep it kind of light up around the uh, the headrest area of the bulkhead because that is going to have to be cleaned up once it gets installed. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the stuff that's going to need chipping so we can get in there and out fast. So, first we've got rudder pedals. Okay, so we've got rudder pedals done. Where's the control stick right here? This is one of the times when I hate having this white bench surface because the contrasts make it tough to see, so I've got to take it over the floor. Alright, there's that. Let's go ahead and get this guy knocked out. It's coming together. Okay, so there's that. Okay, we're back and it is time to do some chipping. 
where should we start? Let's go ahead and start with the control column. So it's probably the finest chipping we need to do, but it's also the easiest to correct because we can just kind of come in here and dab in with a sponge as we need to. Zoom in a little bit so we have a better view. How about that? So I've got my water here. Got a nasty old brush that's good for chipping. Just get a little bit of water on it. Have the water on there. I'm going to put on a little magnifying visor so I can see this better. This is also the fun part where we find out if the rumors about Mr. Color chipping are true. does not bode super well. What the hell is happening? There we go. For some reason this brush was not absorbing water at all. So it wasn't getting any up here. Probably more water than I want, but we are fighting some Mr. Color here, which does seem to be a bit more chip proof than up oh, there, a few starting. And most of these chips will be on the back side, obviously, because that is where you know, the pilot's kicking it. Banging it into the seat. Bouncing against it as they get into the cockpit, all that kind of stuff. See there, we've got just a little bit. We don't want a whole lot. I do think it is a bit heavily focused on one side. Let's change that a little bit. With something like this, because it's such a small part, I would either go a little bit overboard for sort of the uh, stage makeup effect if you will, because otherwise it will be lost inside of the cockpit. So that looks pretty solid. Nice chips and scuffs. Next in order of importance, we're going to do the seat. The seat's going to be interesting because it's photo etched, so I'm hoping I don't you know, scuff through and expose the actual etch itself. Thinking about places where you will see wear on these. It's where the belt contact, where the butt contacts, that sort of thing. That's pretty nice right
pretty decent amount of scratching going on in there. Let's move to the outside of the seat. Again, trying to focus on where we would get actual scuffs in real life. Seat edges make a ton of sense. This little lever. It's looking pretty solid. I'm liking that quite a bit. <coughs> right, now we gotta get this outside edge and then we can move on to the cockpit floor. Yay! That is a pretty good looking banged up seat right there. See if we can put a bit more shit on it here up at the frame. Just from all the seat belt harness rubbing against it, it's gonna wear it down, obviously. All right, that looks pretty solid. All right. Now let's go ahead and deal with the cockpit floor. First, I'm gonna do a quick seat placement. So pretty much, as you can see here, anywhere sort of on these kick plates and kind of in that area is fair game. I don't really think there's much chipping called for, especially back here behind the seat because you're never gonna be reaching it, but maybe right up under it if the pilot tucks their feet or something like that. So it's a Good sort of target measure to always place the seat and figure out where chipping makes sense. So I'll do a little bit in here. Just for another side note, I want to see where the instrument panel falls. Ah, come on. Because that will help us determine where the rudders go. So the instrument pedal kind of in line with that little pipe looking thing up there. I don't really want to go too much beyond that. Because you can't kick your feet past the rudder pedals. So you're not going to see scuffing back there either.
that's a tricky spot to get into with a brush without getting a bunch of stuff you don't necessarily want to get out of the way. So. Again, trying to pay attention to foot traffic patterns and where the feet would fall and all of that. And because this is a Pacific Theater aircraft, there's going to be a lot of dust and stuff that's going to go down on top of this. Pilots don't walk on air when they walk to the flight line. Walking on crushed coral, sand, mud, and shit. That crushed coral is super abrasive, so it hits the paint. It's ground in, ends up chipping it. And that looks pretty solid. And fun thing about the P-47, at least the trumpeter kit, is that this instrument panel piece is a very squirrely mount. So this tells me that we're close. You know, I think the scuffing looks decent for the seat. I think we need to carry it a little bit further forward up in the uh, rudder pedal area because as you can see, oh, out of the way seat. As you can see there, the kick marks don't quite move up to where the rudders are. So, a little bit more to go. better. One of the keys to chipping is to manage how much water you have on the brush. You want enough to kind of make that initial penetration and then you want to dial it back very quickly otherwise you just start taking off sheets. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, Back a little bit further up. Let's go and try the. Turn panel in here again. Come on. Okay, that looks more like what we're trying to get to. So, sweet. The cockpit is chipped. How about that? And then the stick in here. Let's see how that looks. That looks the part. It's a bit bland, but it's going to be tough to get that to really stand out too much just with everything else going on in there. So it will do its job. I might see if I can tweak it just a tiny little bit more though. Get some of that detail out here in the back. not play with fire too much and call that a day. And with that, it's time to shut down and move on to the next phase.